Reporting in progress. Uh, Madam Chair, if you are back, the floor is all yours. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let's do a quick roll call. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Oh, Here. Mr. Shepard? Present. Mr. Valencia? Present. Ms. Barraza? Here. Ms. We will. Present. Mr. Lang. Co coordination would be pretty good. Present. Uh, Present. Great. Uh, sorry, George, Mr. Stembridge? Yeah. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the last of the 11 a.m. cases, we have case BOA 1421808, the address of 1 Mount Vernon Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, I'm Sean McCormick of Davis Mall and DeAugustine, and I represent the applicant DB Delivery Mass LLC. So this is a request to open a delivery only cannabis business at one Mount Vernon Street. Uh, next slide, please. So the the applicant is a certified economic empowerment and social equity applicant applicant. Uh, they have been in business in, in Wareham for a year doing delivery, so this is an experienced operator. Um, next slide, please. So this is the zoning code refusal. The, the two issues here are uh, the, the, the building has been used as a non-conforming use. It was used as a it's a sort of warehouse and processing facility for food products uh, with a delivery component. They are asking to change from that non-conforming use to a new non-conforming use, which is uh, a cannabis delivery. Uh, the second issue is it is less than half a mile from an existing uh, medical cannabis facility. Um, next slide, please. So the so on the separation, you know, the 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 delivery only model, it it doesn't have any retail component. It doesn't have any um, customers showing up. It doesn't have any branding or signage on the exterior of the building. So it is really going to be almost uh, indistinguishable from the from the prior non conforming use, which which was at the site. Um, it, it really is not going to uh, implicate any of the concerns that animated the, the half mile separation between cannabis businesses because the, the, the models are just so different. It's really not a retail establishment. It, the idea is that, that passenger vehicles would, would leave the site a couple times a day, go do their rounds in Boston, greater Boston, uh, and, and return to the site. Um, one of the features of this um, uh, property that make it so attractive to this business is that we are able to do all uh, deliveries, like wholesale deliveries, and also employee parking and storage of their delivery fleet inside the building. There is um, almost 7,000 square feet of parking available inside the building. Uh, so there's not going to be any increased parking demand uh, in the in the neighborhood uh, as a result of this project uh, next slide <clears throat> so this shows the proposed site you can see the building uh, takes up almost the entirety of the lot uh, again there are no proposed changes to the building it, it's going to be used as is it's it's basically um, you know ideal for this type of use uh, next slide please uh, so this is a this is a floor plan. There's going to be storage areas. They're able to accommodate wholesale delivery uh, inside in a secure area off the street. Uh, the parking and vehicle loading can take place inside the building. There'll be uh, secure storage areas. They've got a um, 
uh, a security consultant. They have a host community agreement with the city of Boston. So they've been through that process. They've been through the process of community outreach meetings. They have uh, the support of the McCormick Civic Association. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, to ju uh, just to reiterate, you know, the, the, the business is going to be main, uh, confined to the actual building. There really shouldn't be any visible um, uh, impacts on the, on the outside. No, you know, product, no branding, no, no um, customers lining up or anything like that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there was a traffic report commissioned uh, uh, using the city's technical assistance program. Uh, Fuss and O'Neill concluded that there's really going to be a negligible impact on traffic. The, the delivery model that they use is, is, not to, is not like a pizza place where you're going back and forth every time there's a new order. The, the vehicles are loaded. They leave the facility um, once or twice a day. They're out for, for hours at a time and then they come back. So they're predicting that there are going to be 24 vehicle trips per day, which is, um, you know, would be a barely noticeable impact. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, there's no unfinished, unpackaged cannabis products, so there's not going to be any issue with smell. Um, all loading and unloading will be indoors. There's not going to be an issue there. The, um, the, there are no customers, um, no public access. There's going to be a secure location uh, without any of the impacts from, uh, from an in-person retail site. Uh, next slide, please. This is a, um, this is a rendering. The, the applicant has been working with the Civic Association and the, um, and the mural crew to come up with a, a mural design for the outside of the building. Um, um, this is, you know, this is just a, a rendering, but I think it's going to be, you know, a, a nice addition to this uh, existing building in the neighborhood. And and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions from the board. Thank you. Uh, what's in, what's there currently, or what was the last uh, use of the space? It was it was some it was it was related to food. We I think it was a bakery or bakery products, but but they uh, there were food products stored on site, and they were and they would. Uh, be out for delivery using uh, delivery trucks. Any questions from the board? And yes, I, I, I just wanted to ask if the proponent already has uh, approval from the the cannabis board. So, so they're uh, in the midst of that. Uh, the the they they have um, they would have some steps to go through after they get zoning approval um i, I think so so that that's the answer is they're not fully approved yet they can't get fully approved um absent zoning approval but they have been through the process once for their uh outlet in wareham i'm sorry javier is that accurate because i i feel like we don't usually see cases until after they've been approved yeah, uh, my recollection is that for the cannabis, cannabis board, they would need to be approved, send it to us, and then it'd be for zoning approval. But I'm not sure of a process where we need to do approval and it goes back for, for, for more approval from the cannabis board. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, so the, the, Boston, the, the, the Boston Cannabis Board has given the host community agreement. Um, I, I, I was confusing this with the State Cannabis Commission. Okay, so you have approval from the, Bo the Boston Cat, whatever yes, it's called, Cannabis Board. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mr. Valencia? Yes, and when did you get that approval? I was trying to find the documentation and I couldn't. I believe it was approximately six weeks ago. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Can we take public testimony? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ross Cochran with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant has completed their community process at this time. Our office held in a voter meeting on January 10th, where <laughs> concerns over traffic, congestion, and antisocial behavior were expressed. 
The proponents went on to meet with the local civic association where they received support from the group. At this time, we'd like to defer to the uh, judgment of this board. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McGeckman, City Councilor Frank Baker's office would like to go on record and support. Councilor Flint's office, the hand is raised. I may have stepped away. Um, Jeffrey? Is that Jeff Hampton? Yes, thank you, uh, Jess. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We recommend a denial on this because it's a three family zoning district. Uh, I know from living in the neighborhood how that building has been for years, and I know it's been industrial and commercial, uh, but it is still a very hardcore residential zoning district. Uh, so we recommend a denial. One other thing that was brought to our attention on the refusal letter, it doesn't say anything about delivery. It just says that it's going to be a cannabis establishment. So if the board were to approve it, I would ask that it would be for delivery only and no sales because the zoning letter, the refusal letter doesn't state that. Thank you. I, I was wondering the same thing. So thanks for calling that out. Any other uh, comments? I have no additional raised hands. Any other questions from the board? With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of denial, um, given that it's not in character with the residential use of the neighborhood. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Uh, no. Mr. Shepard. Mr. Shepard? Sorry, no. no. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? No. Mr. Langham? No. The chair also votes no. The motion does not carry. Um, Madam Chair, this is Javier. Um, if you would like to request another motion, you can. If not, the next motion you can request is a dismissal without prejudice. Denial without prejudice. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, do we have another motion? Madam Chair, oh, I'll make a motion to approve. I think the delivery operator use is appropriate given um, the non conforming nature of the property. Um, it seems to operate similarly to the what I heard described as like a bakery wholesale operation. Um, so I would make a motion to approve with the proviso that it is delivery operator only, not retail established or what Mr. Hampton said. No, those, no um, on site sales. Correct. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, um, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedebraza. No. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Mr. Langham. No, no. Okay. Boy, I hate it being left up to me. <laughs> mm. The chair also votes no. I, I agree that the nature of the neighborhood does not seem to lend itself. So motion does not carry. I think that's it, right? Is that it, Ms. Javier, or am I supposed to call another vote? Um, at this point, since two motions have failed, they would be considered denied unless someone wants to put a motion of uh, do you want the denied without prejudice, but right now it would be denied at this point. Okay, I think we can move okay. on unless someone feels strongly. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, um, we will now head to the uh, rediscussion scheduled for 11.30. First being case BOA 1406267. The address of 166 Chelsea Street is the applicant or the representative present. Thank you, uh, 
Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the owner of 166 Chelsea Street, Gabriel Castano, the applicant, and I also have David Choi, who is the attorney on the project. Uh, this uh, proposal is to change the occupancy from an existing six unit building um, to add an additional top floor unit uh, for the owner for his private residence to a seven family dwelling. Uh, to also renovate the structure. If we could leave it on this slide. Uh, no, one more up, Madam Ambassador, sorry. Uh, next slide. Yes, right here. This uh, is an overview of the general area. You can see the red highlighted dot is the existing structure. Uh, behind us, just to look for precedent, is um, the uh, Paris uh, flats, a uh, Paris Street apartment complex that is a four story uh, multi unit, 30 unit uh, building in the rear directly behind us. As we start to go down the street, two down from us is a four story uh, condo building called the Paris Flats. Uh, we also um, have 156, 160 Chelsea Street, 245 Chelsea Street that was recently approved for a similar building uh, and 134 Chelsea Street. Um, the units one through six are already pre-existing units. Um, this fourth floor unit um, would be a three bedroom. Uh, it would be 1,464 square foot unit for the owner. This building would have two full means of egress and be fully sprinklered. Uh, as we worked uh, with the community as well as the Maverick Central uh, Neighborhood Association to get their support, we agreed that the top floor would be pulled back um, eight feet from the, from the top of the bay um, and would also be pulled in two foot three inches on either side of the building. Um, so as we, uh, so from the front of the building, it, uh, the massing would be lessened by pulling it back. So it would be 15 feet pulled away from Chelsea Street. Um, just to go over uh, some of the violations that were mentioned, this is a 3F district, although there's multi-family residential buildings around us. Uh, so the seven units would require a use variance. Uh, the FAR uh, existing is 2.45. We would be proposing 2.9 uh, for an FAR variance. Uh, we, uh, at our highest point, would be at 43 feet 9 inches. So we would need um, height variance in feet and in stories. And then the other violations like parking, rear yard, we're not changing the contours of the building going back or anything additionally on the sides. Um, all of the other violations for front yard and rear yard and parking would be pre-existing uh, violations. We are also uh, just a minute away from airport T station, making this a great uh, commuter building as well. I, I can pause to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? I just want to confirm, Mr. Drago, it, it appears that this is, would be one of the only four stories in, in the uh, immediate area. Is that accurate? No, it's not, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, I had okay. modeled off a few, but directly. Yeah, that, there is a four story. Um, I'm trying to find the address. Mm -hmm. It's called Paris Flats. Okay. That's two down, uh, uh, Ms. Barraza. So directly okay. to the left of us, that's a condo building. That's four. At 245 Chelsea, it's hard okay. to see. That's recessed. I actually represented a client, got that approved uh, about a year ago. 142 Chelsea, 186 Paris, 189 Paris. So there are a number. Okay. I think why it's a little misleading is they all have a pullback if they're going to have the fourth floor. So it's Ma majority, majority is three stories, but there are some anomalies that are four story high for, for my colleagues to know. Okay, thank you. All right, other questions from the board? Okay, with that, let's uh, open up to public testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benito with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted a butters meeting for this project on November 10th, 2022. Noah Butters attended the meeting. The applicant also met with Maverick Central Neighbor Association in December and January of this year. The group voted in support of this project. And at this time, our office would like to refer all judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Sebastian? 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Once again, my name is Sebastian Parra. I'm the East Boston liaison for City Council Gabriel Coleta. Based on Maverick Central Neighborhood Association's vote, the council would like to go and support this project. Thank you. I have no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval uh, with BPDA design review. I think the project fits within its context and I'm glad to see that front step back on the fourth floor. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Better Braza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Yes. yes. At this time, Madam Chair, I'd like to um, ask if for the 1 p.m. hearings, if there are any withdrawals or deferrals being requested. Hearing none, then we'll um, move on and um, back to the group discussions at 11.30 a.m. Case number BOA 1432527. With the address of 184 Cowper Street, is the applicant or a representative present? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston. On behalf of the petitioner for the project at 184 Cowper Street, uh, if we can jump ahead to the third slide, that's probably a good place to start so I can at least orient the members with some. Uh, context for the area. Uh, Madam Chair, this site uh, will involve the combination of two lots. Uh, when those lots are combined, uh, the total square footage would be over 15,000 square feet, uh, which is close to four times the minimum lot size for this district. I say that and the importance of, of laying that out first for the, for the, uh, for the board is to also uh, point out some of the surrounding context for the area. As you can see off in the distance, close to the top of the photo, that is Constitution Beach. That is our nearest abutter to the rear. Uh, to, to our left is the MBTA right away. And to the right uh, is a vacant area which uh, has been recently developed for multifamily use. Uh, this site currently sits at the end of a dead end street, which is known as Cowper Street. And our building uh, that we are proposing to demolish and replace is on the left hand side. If we can scroll down to the next slide. Uh, perhaps one more slide would be helpful. So the existing building uh, sits on the first lot. The lot immediately adjacent to it would be combined. As I mentioned, that it's a little over 15,000 square feet when put together. Our proposal would be for a seven unit multifamily dwelling uh, on this site. Now we fully understand that this site is located in a 2F 4,000 district, but uh, as I had mentioned, the combining of these lots uh, would, would result in a lot that exceeds what the allowable density is essentially for this neighborhood. A 2F 4,000 district contemplates one unit uh, for every 2,000 square feet. At seven units, we feel that we are below uh, what the uh, density would be uh, had the configuration of this lot itself uh, or was, was arranged in a way that it had front, you know, enough frontage on Carper Street. Because this is somewhat odd shaped, uh, we were only able to orient our building a certain way, and that's why we're proposing this as a seven unit dwelling. Can we go to the next slide, please. Just a different view of Culper as you're coming down to the dead end. The left hand side is the building that would be raised uh, with the new building being proposed on the site. Next slide, please. So here's a rendering and uh, we do have Adam Glassman here who is the project architect. There have been some updates to the rendering based on the community process and I do have those in the board of uh, appeal plan that is before the board today. Uh, most importantly, and this is based in large part upon comments that we did here through the community process, uh, four of these units will be actually three bedrooms, uh, and two of the, uh, uh, three of the units will be two bedrooms. The reason for that is the comments that we did here is that the uh, goal was to see uh, as many family size units uh, being incorporated into a project like this for this uh, residential neighborhood. Uh, so the change of the project actually resulted in a reduction of the units. I believe the notice says eight, we're down to seven units. And again, the mix being four three bedroom um, and three two bedroom units. 
the average size of the units are almost 1,300 square feet. More importantly, uh, with respect to issues such as planning spots and things that are happening uh, in and around the community, uh, we are occupying only 21%. So the footprint of this building uh, is 21% is, uh, lot coverage, uh, which leaves us about 5,000 square feet of usable open space that we intend to keep as common area for this building, which is intended for home ownership as well. So these would be seven condo units with a substantial amount of open space and limited impact on our butters, both left uh, and rear of the property. If we could scroll down to the next slide, please. Uh, these are just some 3D views uh, showing the uh, orientation of the back of the building and the front of the building, the comparisons. One of the things that we did change again is to try to pull those decks in uh, to create a little bit more privacy uh, for neighbors, surrounding neighbors in the area. Uh, if we want to go down to um, uh, slide 15, uh, that's our site plan. I think that's an important uh, place to stop off next. Right here is perfect. Uh, so we are also proposing, as you can see on the layout here, when we do combine the lots, there is a total of 16 parking spaces. I know the board may react to that in a way to say that that's certainly a lot of parking. Again, part of the concern that we did here in this neighborhood is that parking is a concern and is an issue. Uh, and since we do have a substantial amount of space on the site, uh, we were able to accommodate uh, some of the comments and concerns that we did here from the neighborhood. So in doing so, we created a total of 16 spaces. And as you can see, towards the bottom of the screen, a substantial amount of buffering between us and our direct abutter to our left, who I believe is on the call, uh, who we've worked very closely with in uh, getting uh, to have support for this particular project. You can also see the relationship of the other green space that is around the building, uh, including all that area that will remain as common. When it comes to the relief that's necessary, we've tried to design this building in a way that respects the current zoning, but also plans for future zoning for the area. Uh, the first variance that we do require, however, is for use. Being a 2F4000 district, uh, this is uh, considered a multifamily use and therefore uh, would requ require relief. But as you can see, uh, even though we do meet the frontage requirement, the orientation of the lot would not allow for us to subdivide this lot into uh, buildable separate lots. So instead, we are proposing this as a single building. Uh, and again, being uh, the density for this area being 2,000 square feet for each unit, we would be under uh, what the allowable density would be. In addition, uh, the rear yard setback typically in this district is 40 feet. However, uh, we are setting it back. It looks like about 11, maybe a little over 11 feet to our uh, rear decks off the back. Uh, our abutter to the rear is Constitution Beach. There is no uh, other residential property uh, that could ever be contemplated back there that is uh, a state-owned um, conservation and uh, parkland behind us. So uh, while we do uh, uh, come a little bit uh, closer to the rear property as would be normal for this district, uh, we aren't impacting any other property to our, uh, to our rear. Uh, and what that's also allowed us to do is to push our building a little further back into the site uh, which again uh, was to address some concerns of our direct butter on Culver Street uh, that would be adjacent to our parking area. Uh, with respect to the uh, height of our building, and we can probably jump back a few slides to our uh, elevations, um, the zoning district uh, actually, uh, we can go forward, there we go, perfect. Uh, the zoning district actually allows for a 35 foot height limit, which we're at. So the peak of our building is at 35 feet. However, from a design standpoint, uh, the uh, the zoning code says that it cannot be more than 2.5 stories. Um, I think Adam has done a pretty good job of trying to capture some of the press that we do see in the area with the pitched roof. So even though this is considered to be a three-story building, the design elements that were included, uh, which are trying to reflect some of the uh, two and a half story that we do see in and around the area. Uh, we pretty much meet all of the other requirements of the current zoning. As I mentioned, the open space for the site is about 5,000 square feet. That's about 715, almost 720 square feet per unit. Um, they do have uh, out outdoor balcony space and decks, uh, and we certainly would uh, incorporate uh, a lot of common area for the, uh, for the building itself. Uh, with respect to parking, the only requirement is that we would have uh, 12 spaces out of the code. We are providing 16, again, because we do have the availability to do that. Uh, certainly willing to listen to the board's uh, comments uh, as it relates to um, uh, any parking uh, configurations or additional landscaping that would be uh, would be needed. Um, with that, I will pause uh, and ask if there are any questions or comments from the board. Thank you, Mr. Lins. Um, 
just to confirm, when did you change from eight to seven? Uh, it's just noted as seven in the notice. Yeah, so that was sometime, I believe, um, uh, earlier this year, uh, the updated plans would have been filed with, uh, with ISD and then brought over to the board. Got it. Um, any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, uh, can I open it up to public testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted various butters meeting for this project. The latest butters meeting uh, took place on October 5th, 2022. Uh, butters liked the design and the family friendly size of the units, but they also expressed concerns regarding the size of the building itself and potential lo loss of parking. The applicant also met with Harborview Neighborhood Association. The group voted to oppose with 42 residents against and one in favor. They expressed discontent with the size of the building. The applicant was able to work with the director butter, and for that, we've received two letters in support, one from the director butter. At this time, our office would like to defer all judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Sebastian Parra. I am the East Boston liaison for City Council Gabriela Coleta. Uh, we understand the proponent has worked diligently to come down in scale, height, and unit count to the point that there is one abutter who is in favor of the project. We respect that work and the opinion of the abutter. Nonetheless, other abutters on the street have concerns about this parcel turning into a seven unit dwelling in comparison with other homes in the community. Uh, we plan in Boston coming down the pike respectfully. We do not think that this project is aligned with the scale on this particular street or with Plan East Boston, therefore, Councilor Coletta would like to go on record in opposition of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Philip, since I can you, can you state your name and address for the record? Tell us if you're in support or opposition. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. My name is Philip Ranger Forty. I live at 178 Compass Street. I'm the director of me and my wife. Um, we were opposed to it at the beginning, but we worked very diligently with Attorney Lins um, and the owners of the, of the new property. Um, we support it and we don't oppose it. Um, and the thing, they, you know, they, they met all the demands with pushing it back. Parking, parking's a big thing. I think we need the 16 parking spots because of the, the neighborhood. It is a dead end street and parking's very tight down there. So having those 16 parking spaces is, is big for us. So we are uh, in favor and we don't oppose. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, skip that. He's given testimony. I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hampton, do you do you have a, an opinion based on eight versus seven? Uh, eight versus uh, we still think that the building is too big, even with just the reduction to uh, seven units. We recommend it to now without prejudice because the passage is just too big. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I, if I can just briefly respond, and I, I understand we are, if I may, Yes, sir. I, I understand we are in transition, um, and I know that the Plan East Boston conversation, you know, pretty much, um, you know, is, is is what everybody is relying upon uh, at this point. Um, this lot, uh, when combined as a 15,000 square foot lot, uh, would certainly be unique in relation to all of the other lots uh, in and around this particular area. It's, it's as I said, four times, we four times the size of what the minimum lot size is currently. And, you know, for the density at 2,000 square feet per unit, you know, we're at seven units, which would be about 14,000 square feet on the current zoning. I don't anticipate Plan East Boston to be, you know, reducing density, you know, if anything, it'd be increasing density uh, throughout the neighborhood. So I, I understand all the concerns about Plan East Boston, but we also have that in mind uh, when taking into consideration things like lot coverage and open space. And in this particular case, we feel that, you know, a 15,000 square foot lot on many other projects I've done, you know, would certainly yield a proposal of a much grander scale. We wanted to be sensitive to that. And that's one of the reasons why we've limited this to a seven unit building, uh, stuck with the three bedrooms because that was important in the neighborhood, you know, and obviously opted for home ownership with a good amount of open space. So I just, I want to make sure that the board, you know, understands that not every case, just because Plan East Boston is looming in the background, uh, you know, isn't taken into consideration. We feel that, you know, uh, neighborhood residential 50, uh, this would be very consistent with those plans uh, if they're adopted ultimately by the BPDA. Can I, can I ask a, another question for clarification? Of course. Um, 
The FAR, am I reading it correctly, required is 0.8, but your proposal is actually 0.63. Is that, is, is that correct? Yes. That, that's incomplete. Yes, uh, Ms. Barraza, through the chair. It is point, it's 0.8, point, is correct? That's required? Point, yeah, point 0.8 is the max. We're at 0.625, so okay, we're below. Great. Below okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other I'm gonna, questions? I'm sure another qu yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, I do have a question. Um, Attorney Lynn, this I'm struggling with just the amount of paving on the site and it just reads as auto-centric to me. Were there any concepts that sort of prioritize like the building instead of the first thing you see is the parking and the entry to the uh, parking area? So <laughs> great, great question. I think that um, part of the original plan looked at you know reorienting parking in a different portion of the lot i think we would have eaten up a lot more open space this uh this area for parking you know requires the least amount of i guess lack of a term least amount of driveway to get to a different portion of the site for where we want to put the building um the director butter uh to our left who did speak um you know had raised those concerns as well and that's why we have a pretty substantial uh landscape buffering in between uh his property and our property and certainly willing to look at you know additional um uh, bpd design review for that that parking area and i think also one of the things that i probably failed to mention was that uh looking at um previous uh, pavement on the site is something that uh was requested i think we don't have any issue with that as well how many trees do we lose uh there's a tree to the rear of the property that uh, we I do believe we share with the direct of butter. Um, we're you know happy to preserve or happy to prune or happy to do what works best because I think it is somewhat of a nuisance to the butter on the left. I think that that's the only tree that's in question. That's the one closest to uh, the MBTA right of way. I thought it was the tree next to the property. Uh, I'm looking at Google Earth and there's a huge sure. canopy I don't next, have to, next to 184 because you're proposing to build on that property, right? That's vacant right now. Correct. Okay, great, thank you. I have one more. Um, can you speak to the main entrance that it's, we have information it does not abide by building code no. standards? If, I'm not sure if we can jump back to our site plan, but I think uh, just understanding the orientation of the lot, we have um, where, we, where we've located the driveway to come onto the property you know, is essentially what I would argue the front facing portion of Cowper Street. I mean, Cowper then, you know, the, the property line then takes a 90 degree turn at the dead end. So um, we would have to orient the building in a way either to face Cowper Street with that front entrance or create some sort of arrangement with a, yeah, there we go, or create a front entrance on that right side of the building behind parking space 12. Um, and that's probably not going to be a very good design. Again, these are things that we can certainly willing to address as part of design review, but I feel that that's the only option here based upon the shape of this lot, uh, that we wouldn't be able to have a straight head on unless we move the building, you know, a different way and put the parking behind the, um, Katie, to resolve the issue of entrance, if you were to get rid of the four parking spaces um, that are kind of right next to each other to the left, you can actually push the parking spaces down and create a connection or a walkway but the idea would be that you should have a connection from the front to your entry so i think it's really about site planning yep. um, to to let people know where your front door is okay can i speak again as the director of Butter? Getting rid, of, getting, rid of, getting, rid, getting rid of parking on that street is, it's just, we're overwhelmed. We need parking. All due respect, I am the director about it. It's in. Sorry, you got, just got, did you want him to? Oh, is still on? Yeah. You, um, did you want to finish your statement? Yeah. What I'm saying is, is all due respect, it's in my backyard and it's right there on the property line. We need the most parking as possible. It's a dead end street. If we take parking spaces away, it's it's not going to work. Thank you. We need the parking. Thank, Thank you. Okay. With that uh, additional, those additional clarifications, can we have a motion? I can put a motion forward. 
just going to have to be a little patient <laughs> with me in terms of the proviso. But um, okay. so I, I think the um, the property is like four times larger uh, in terms of the zoning um, for the lot. So putting forth seven unit, I would say is a good amount in terms of density is actually lower than the FAR that's required. So I'm okay with the seven that's proposed and consolidating these units should allow for more open area. And so with that, I am advocating that for seven residential units, um, 12 spaces should be sufficient not 16, so I'm advocating to remove four of the parking spaces to the left to allow that to be more open green space for the unit. So the motion is approval with the following proviso, eliminate four parking spaces, BPDA review on the site planning to work out a pathway connector from the front to the middle of the entry lobby. And the third proviso is to have the front of the building have a door for the unit that faces in front of the, of the, of the, um, of the street. Those would be my provisos. Thank you. Is there I'll a second? Say. I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Stumbridge. Um, no. Do you want to, you don't have to, but do you want to elaborate? Um, in terms of for what I know of the area, uh, as people speaking up for uh, the way that is designed and parking, excuse me, in the parking, um, I, I do believe that's, I do believe that's, that's important. Thank you. Mr. Shepard. I also say no due to uh, the direct of butter. And as far as green space, uh, I do see, you know, open space owned by the city right there with a lot of green space in the area. So there is green space in the area. Thank you. Mr. Valencia. I think that with the provisos that Ms. Bader Barraza just mentioned, the project is going to improve and I vote yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. You always leave it up to Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with Mr. Stembridge and Mr. Shepard. I think um, the applicant has worked closely with the butter around various issues and uh, you know there is green space in the area and I think parking uh, is important uh, so I also vote no. So the motion does not carry and we need another motion. And it, it no other side of that, if no motion is presented uh, that would be a straight denial or uh, another motion could be denied without prejudice. So the options are denial, denial without prejudice, or approval with whatever provisos. Okay. So can I have another motion? Mr. the chair, uh, yes. I'd like to make a motion for approval with BPDA design review. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. I want the proponent to consider the recommendations that the board made to improve the project in the access. But with that, I vote yes. Okay, got it. Uh, Ms. Berebraza. This is a motion for approval with BTA, BPDA design review, correct? Correct. Yes. Ms. Rewell. When I vote no, I'm still uncomfortable with the amount of parking. Okay, Mr. Langham. No. Uh, the chair votes yes, the motion carries. Thank you very much, Madam Good Chair, luck. support. Thank you. We will return to the rediscussion for the scheduled for 1130.
Next on the list is case BOA 1406531, the address being 185 East, East Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? Yes, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with Adams and Maranci, business address of 168 8th Street, first floor, South Boston. Uh, joining me today is the architect, Tim Johnson. Uh, Madam Chair, um, our revised plans triggered a building code refusal for the proposed vertical lift for handicap access to a full story. Um, we will be seeking the variance through the state, but I wanted to be sure to add this uh, to the record so there is no confusion with ISD. Uh, with that being said, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is a proposal to combine three parcels, 185 East Street, 183 East Street, 164 West 9th Street, with a total lot size of approximately 3,357 square feet to erect a new four-unit, three-story multifamily residential dwelling with six below-grade off-street parking spaces. I uh, just want to draw your attention to page six of the plans here, right? Yep, perfect. So vehicles will access the building off of West 9th Street via an 11 foot wide driveway, which will lead to the below grade parking. Approximately about five feet will have to be dug below grade to accommodate. We are located within a multifamily residential subdistrict. Um, if I could direct your attention to page uh, 13, please. Parking level will contain eight spaces, ranging from two spaces, eight by 18, two spaces, seven by 16, in another two spaces, seven by 18, which resulted in a parking violation, a design violation. There will also be a wheelchair lift access, as well as a trash storage, bike storage, and a utility room. Unit one, uh, we can scroll to the next page. Unit one will be approximately 1,230 square feet, located on the first floor and part of the second floor. It will consist of a three bedroom, living room, dining room, and a two and a half bath. Units two will be approximately 1,340 square feet located on the first floor and part of the second. It will consist of a three bedroom, living, dining, and a two and a half bath. Unit three will be approximately 1,461 square feet located on part of the second floor and third. It will consist of a three bedroom, living, dining, and a two and a half bath. Units four will be approximately 1,492 square feet located on part of the second floor and third. It will also consist of a three bedroom living, dining, and a two and a half bath. Uh, you'll notice uh, from the rear, uh, units two and four will have small, balcony, small balconies located in the rear of the building, approximately 67 square feet. The roof plan will consist of mechanicals only with bulkhead access. As for the violations, uh, you'll notice there's a violation for height, as height being the proposed is 35 feet, which is under what is required by Article 68. However, uh, since the existing structure is being demolished, the max height allowed is, is at that height of 26 feet. Again, height is compliant under Article 68. If I could draw your attention to page 9 um, and page 11, those will show views of the actual property um, in existence. And this, here, this view that you have in front of you now is the actual elevations compared to the right side and to the uh, more recently approved project on the left-hand side. As you see from the right, that is a building, a four-story building. Uh, we have another violation for insufficient lot size. 2,000 square feet of lot area is required for the first unit and 1,000 square feet of lot area for each additional unit, which would require us to provide 5,000 square feet. And again, we have 3,357 square feet. We also have a rear yard setback uh, violation here. Uh, the requirement is 15 feet. The existing structure in its place now is less than uh, three feet to the property line. We're actually going to increase that uh, setback by approximately, will be three feet from the property line with the new proposed building. There was also a violation for the front yard, uh, but it's my opinion this was given an error as the violation is for window designs projecting into the front yard at the second and third stories. There's no such violations as stated uh, to govern air rights. However, we do conform with Public Improvements Commission's requirements for bays encroaching on the public way. In concluding, I believe the massing and the density of this proposal is in line with the BPDA's recommendation of approval for this proposal. Um, and again, their proposal was recommending approval when it was at a higher unit count of six. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to pause for any uh, questions from the board. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the board? 
Okay, hearing none, may I take public testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS has hosted two abutters meetings for 185 E Street, <laughs> the most recent one being held on May 2nd, 2023. The proponent made changes to the proposed building based on community feedback. They reduced the number of units and reworked and removed some of the balconies. There were around a dozen abutters at the second meeting and they were all still in opposition to the proposal. Their main objections were the size of the building and the underground parking. ONS has received a petition from abutters with 45 signatures in opposition. The Cityside Neighborhood Association does not support this project as it is currently proposed. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any of the elected officials office? No? Good morning. No? Oh, go ahead. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Vanessa Wu from Council President Flynn's office. Council President Flynn would like to go on record in opposition based on feedback from neighbors in the city side neighborhood association. There was a good community process and meeting with neighbors to work on multiple iterations of the project. However, neighbors, abutters, and the civic group continue to call attention to quality of life issues, such as concerns about the bedroom count and um, exacerbating the existing parking issues in the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Bill Davis. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, I'm Bill Davis, 177, 181 E Street. My property abuts this uh, building project on two sides, and I um, oppose this project based <laughs> upon the uh, proximity of the driveway, which is going to be one foot from my building foundation into an underground parking garage. Um, they have not addressed the abutters' concerns on this uh, project. It's the size of the building, the bedroom count, the underground parking spaces, the lot line, uh, windows, balconies, green space, groundwater issues that exist in the area. And uh, basically there are five abutters, direct abutters to this development uh, that, that have the name on that petition. Uh, opposing this project as it as it stands thank you there's others that would like to speak uh that couldn't log on um if, if possible um it'd be great if the board would grant them permission to speak thank you okay um marie brady hello can you hear me yes go ahead Hi, uh, so this is Marie Brady. I'm a direct butter on that's 168 West 9th Street. So I'm at the rear of the proposed building right now. Uh, I have several problems with the building. Uh, the building is, as uh, some people mentioned, it's too big. But the big thing that nobody's really mentioned is the 15-foot uh, setback that's supposed to be in the back of that building, which my building looks onto where the balconies are proposed. It's only three feet right now from the balcony to the fence that is ours, uh, part of our units at 168 West 9th Street. So I have a big problem with the setback uh, being only three feet instead of the required 15 feet, uh, among all the other objections that people have already mentioned. Thank you. Okay. Um, Phil? Hi. My... And we can't hear. That's pretty yeah, go ahead, Phil. Sorry, we lost you. Oops, sorry about that. I, I muted myself. Hi, my name is Kelly Davis, and I live at 177 E Street. So um, you're, you're, I, I believe your family member just spoke. Can we hear from new folks? Yep. Mike? Oh, no, I'm Kelly Davis. I'm I'm under Bill Davis's name. I know, but is he related to you? Yes. Okay, okay so can we hear from some other people from different sure. addresses thank you okay we're all set thank you okay. um, jessica okay yeah, i have no hands are going up and down i don't think i have any additional raised hands all set okay hi. oh hi sorry you just started um uh when the second davis opinion was voiced my name is mike del negro of 150 west 9th street which is um, across the street basically from the proposed building um, I think that a couple of the points that um, Attorney Spitz noted that are of concern to me is the uh, setbacks and the height variances. Um, the existing building fits nicely with the character of the neighborhood, um, which is uh, both well-maintained and um, 
smaller unit size uh, buildings or single family homes. Um, the 26, height foot, uh, 26 foot height requirement um, with the existing building, I think is appropriate to maintain and not consider the Article 68 height uh, development, considering that the building adjacent to it, um, the Davis family's home, is only marginally a four-story building and further the only uh, adjacent building that I think has such height. The setback also I think is important to consider, um, considering that the impact to the uh, neighborhood is, is uh, significant as we start to lose green space. Um, so in addition to the other notes that have been already mentioned, I think that that's important for us to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have no additional raisins. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, uh, with that, may I have a motion? Are there additional questions or is there a motion? I'd like to put forward a motion of denial without prejudice due to um, community opposition. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Better Peraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Great, thank you. Next, we have case BOA 142 the ad with the address of 48 Ellery Street. Is the applicant or the representative present? Yes, Mr. Stembridge, thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I represent Thomas Noto, the proponent of the development project at 48-50 Pellery Street. The site consists of two parcels, which will be combined into a new lot of 5,249 square feet. Being proposed is a new six-story building to contain 14 dwelling units with seven garage parking spaces. The zoning district is a B1 general business district under the 1964 base zoning code. This matter was deferred uh, in order to allow for a continuation of conversations with the Mayor's Office of Housing about the project's affordable housing component. One of the two parcels here is bound by a City of Austin open space deed restriction. On May 4th, we were officially notified by Chief Dillon that the deed restriction will be released in return for a higher affordable commitment from the project. To that end, my client will be providing three IDP units two at 70% AMI and one at 60% AMI, representing a 21% affordability commitment. The ground floor of the building, in, uh, as can be seen here in this slide, would consist of a partly open garage for the parking of seven motor vehicles, along with the bicycle storage room, main building entry on Ellery Street, a trash and recycling room, utility rooms, and the building's elevator and stairway cores. <coughs> uh, the next slides depict uh, what is a common floor plate for floors two through five. These floors would each contain two one-bedroom units of 718 and 871 square feet, and one two-bedroom unit of 1,071 square feet. Scrolling down the sixth floor, which would be set back approximately 10 feet in the front, would consist of two two-bedroom units of 994 and 1,088 square feet. The roof would be occupied only by HVAC equipment, an elevator override, a periphery space for a possible solar panel, and a hatch for maintenance access to the roof. Uh, as can be seen on the front elevation, if we scroll down a bit, uh, the building has been designed to match the height of the adjacent 60-foot, 18-unit building at 44 Ellery Street, which was approved by this board in February of last year and is now under construction. Building's materials would be masonry with a bay finished in a composite panel and lap siding, 
subject, of course, to BBDA design review. The plan set uh, continuing down shows the building's four elevations as well as a number of renderings uh, showing the building in locational context. Zoning relief is required for insufficient off-street parking as the city's preference for residential projects in such close proximity to rapid transit ranges from none to minimal. At this location, which is approximately four minutes walking distance to the MBTA's Andrew Red Line Station, the proposed parking ratio is 0.5, with seven spaces being proposed for the 14 units. The other zoning violations are dimensional and reflect zoning requirements originally set in 1964. There are variances required for excessive floor area ratio. One is the maximum under zoning, whereas 3.5 is being proposed. Insufficient lot size, which as I noted is 5,249 square feet. Excessive building height in stories and feet at six stories and 60 feet versus the three stories and 40 feet allowed by zoning. Insufficient usable open space and insufficient side and rear yard setbacks. I point out with respect to zoning that the site is within the area of the BPDA's approved plan, South Boston Dorchester Avenue, which allows for greater density and building heights in anticipation of new zoning for the area. With that, I'll pause and take any questions that members may have. Thank you, Mr. Barnsey. Any questions from the board? I have one question. Um, with the seven spaces, how will parking be allocated amongst the units? Uh, that's an excellent question, and, and frankly, it would be, I, I guess, as needed in terms of when uh, the units are leased and whether um, the lessee has a need for a uh, motor vehicle parking space. Uh, I think the BBDA may have even preferred to see less parking here. It is very, very close to Andrew Redline, and it would be attractive to a mix of uh, residents, uh, you know, who either own or don't own a motor vehicle. So obviously, there's a 50% uh, of the units uh, for, you know, each uh, philosophy in terms of, um, you know, private motor vehicle ownership in the city this close to rapid transit. Thank you. Here. Any other questions from the board? That may have public testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for 48 Ellery Street on October 12th, 2022. The proponent answered all questions. At the time, two abutters expressed their support for the project. The membership of the Andrews Forest Civic Association voted to support this proposal. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Vanessa Wu from Council President Flynn's office. Council President Flynn would like to go on record and support based on a thorough community process and feedback from neighbors in the Andrew Square Civic Association who are also in support of this project. Um, Council President Flynn respectfully requests that the team continue to work closely with neighbors on any quality of life issues that may arise during the construction phase. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wu. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record and support. We have no additional raisings at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair. Go ahead, yes. John. Thank you, Hansi. Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion to uh, approve the project with, with the PDA design review. May I second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Pedabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Thank you. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We will now move on to the hearing scheduled for 1 p.m. First is the case BOA 1452582, with the address being 197 Lexington Street. Is the applicant or the representative present? Yes, uh, good afternoon. Again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lins, business address at 245 Summer Street, East Boston, on behalf of the homeowners, uh, Eric and Kim Sombrano. Um, Madam Chair, 
real briefly, this was before the board previously, uh, where they change of use and occupancy for the entire building from three to four units and some modifications to the rear decks. Uh, my clients have uh, uh, abandoned the plans for the change of occupancy, which was already approved, uh, and have reconfigured the rear decks. So this, the scope of what's before the board today is limited to just the rear decks and essentially reapproving what was approved previously. If we can jump down to slide 10, I, I'm trying to make this as brief as possible. It's, again, relatively straightforward. So our site plan is here showing the existing uh, non-conforming structure uh, with a 20 foot by about 57 and a half foot lot. Uh, because this is considered a shallow lot, we are uh, eligible for the shallow lot exception of rear yard setback, uh, which would reduce the rear yard to about 10 feet. Uh, we're at about 9.8 feet, as you can see here. Uh, the current decks are about 14.8 feet. I do have some elevation for the next slides, uh, but the rear yard setback is the violation that would be involved for this appeal same violation for the previous uh, appeal that was approved, uh, as well as the uh, usable open space. Because we are reconfiguring the decks themselves, uh, and there already isn't sufficient usable open space for the property, uh, that violation also gets uh, re-triggered uh, for purposes of this appeal. Uh, if we can scroll down to the next slide, uh, we show the existing conditions. This is the deck showing it from both. If I could zoom out a little bit, here we go. So we see both the profile view on the left side of the screen as well as the um, uh, back view of the existing decks. And if we can show the next slide, that'll show what the proposed reconfiguration looks like based upon that site plan that we just showed. So yes, there we go. Uh, so yeah, so uh, reconfigure them with uh, egress stairs out of the back. Uh, and again, we are not changing the occupants of the building or remain a three unit dwelling. It's just essentially a rebuilding of these decks. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, let's take public testimony. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Naval Services. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this project on March 21st of 2023. No abutters attended this meeting. <clears throat> our office is unaware of any concerns at the moment, and at this time, our office would like to refer all judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I have no raises at the moment. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Sebastian Parra. He's boss on liaison for City Council, Gabriel Coleta. Uh, we see on record the last went to Eagle Hill um, Civic Association, August 25th, 2021. Based on the vote taken that day of 10 in support, 11 in opposition, the council would like to go on opposition of this project. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, if I could just clarify, Madam Chair, uh, the, councilor's recommend, uh, the councilor's position was to oppose I believe that was the old project. Uh, this has not gone back before Eagle Hill based upon the fact that we're actually reducing the, uh, the project. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. May I have a second? That's second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Ms. Federaza? Yes. Mr. Valencia? I skipped Yes. <laughs> Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 144-0851. The address being 37 Merrimack Street. Is the applicant for the representative present? Yes, I'm David Sokol. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, please proceed. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is the uh, parking lot across the street from the Brook Courthouse, uh, uh, Caddy Corner to the new State Street building. This uh, uh, was a uh, uh, open air parking lot run by the Frank and Leo Pagano since 1956 continuous use until the pandemic when uh, the Paganos retired and Laz parking took over the operation of, of, the, of, of the parking lot. Um, there are no changes proposed. Uh, recently, trees were planted, metal fencing was added, uh, BPDA approved everything that's there now. Unfortunately, we've been asked to come back every two years to 
ask for permission to continue to use the parking lot. I, I've been parking there for 48 years myself. I'm, I, I continue to park there. It's in continuous use, no changes. We're asking, uh, we're asking to have the conditional use extended without any sunset proviso at this point in time. It's the de facto only parking lot for the Brook Courthouse and with all the new construction there with the, the new paving, the new lines, removing the toilets and putting up new lighting, it, it, it's, it's a pleasure to look at and it certainly serves the community. And my understanding is everybody asked has been in favor of, 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 of the, uh, the petition. Thank you. I, I, anything I can help you with? Any questions from the board? Okay, yes, uh, you yes, mentioned sir. that you planted some trees. How many trees did you plant it? There were four trees planted, sir. They're in beautiful bloom right now in spring. Thank you. And do you think there are oh, there are chances to plant any more trees? I don't really think think it's it, it, it's within in, in the uh, uh, oper, operable uh, uh, observance. It's, it, it just wouldn't work to plant more trees around a parking lot. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I'll take public testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Sierra D'Amico from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Applicant did complete the community process. Um, they did meet with the Downtown North Association and the West End Civic Association, in which they did receive a letter of support from both of those groups. Um, and at this time, our office would like to defer to the board, uh, to the board's judgment. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. Vanessa Wu from Council President Flynn's office. Council President Flynn would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors in the West End Civic Association who indicated that they are not opposed to this extension as well. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record in support. Dennis, are you looking to give testimony here? No, I'm sorry. No. All right. Can lower your hand. I have no additional raised hands. Yeah. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forth a motion of approval with a proviso of a two year extension with lighting, screening, and buffering. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Betabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1441137, with the address being 205 Newberry Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? Uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the applicant. I have no camera option here presently, but can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm the attorney representing the applicant, Semper Holdings, LLC. Uh, with us this afternoon, Phil Colicchio was the uh, owner operator. This is a request to uh, remove a proviso, which was on uh, this location, which was previously a Cafe Nero on Newbury Street in the block between Exeter and Fairfield. Uh, the applicant would like to occupy the space for a very similar purpose, food and beverage, uh, and there would seek to remove the uh, proviso, which was attributed to Cafe Nero. And other than that, there is really nothing else uh, from a zoning perspective we're uh, doing here. We have gone uh, before the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay. Uh, we reached out to the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and after the positive meeting with NAB, we were not required to conduct an abutters meeting. Um, and again, uh, literally other than removing the proviso, there's no other uh, change um, suggested by this application. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing that, maybe we have public testimony. Yes, hello, Madam Chair, members of the board, Maggie Van Scoy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. We actually did hold an abutters meeting for this proposal. A couple of abutters at that meeting raised concerns about this particular restaurant, adding to rodent and litter problems in the alley. Cafe Nero didn't do that because a lot of their things were prepackaged. This would have a kitchen. 
Um, the Back Bay Association is in support of this application, and this applicant also presented to the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay, who is in non-opposition to this proposal. With that, I defer the judgment to the board. Thank you. Okay, sounds like I have no additional raised hands comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. We have a second. 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 All right. A lot of thirds in sports. <laughs> Mr. Femmage. Yeah. Uh, yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Betterbraza. Yes. Ms. Wewo. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. One more Thank case you. to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You. Well, they, uh, uh, the, ne the next and last two are companion cases. Uh, and the first being case BOA 142-7944, with the address being 294 South Street. And, and, and with that, with that is case BOA 142-7946, with the address being 294R South Street. Uh, the, is the applicant and Lord their representative present? Yes, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Michael Chavez. I'm the architect and the representative for Mr. Rosales Solis, who is the owner. And also with uh, me is Derek Thomas, the uh, general contractor on the project. Uh, Ms. Elise participated a few years back in D&Ds, which is now MOH, uh, exploration of doing detached uh, accessory dwelling units as part of a workshopping process that they did in several neighborhoods. Uh, throughout the process, she was, you know, exploring the idea of converting her existing one-story uh, two-car garage into uh, an accessory unit to the house that she owns now, which is an existing two-family. Uh, and she decided to move forward with permitting on that process once we came out of that workshop with, with the city. Uh, so with that, she had to apply essentially for two applications. One of those was for the existing house uh, to allow another you know, dwelling unit on the property because the city of Boston does not currently have a detached ADU program. Uh, and then the other application is then for the actual uh, garage itself and the conversion of that to a livable space. Um, the garage is designed as a studio unit, uh, again, sits at the back of the driveway um, and will be connected utility wise to the main house. So all sewer water and, and electricity will be connected to the main house as an accessory unit would be. Um, uh, adjacent to the property is a VFW, and so she's uh, got some uh, letter permission to have a fire truck access uh, from that side of the uh, fence if they needed to have access to that to that building for any reason. Um, and the rest of the driveway would be used as tandem parking spaces as it currently is being used now. Um, and I, I'm not sure if this is the old, the original submission or if this is the updated version, but again, it's a studio existing empty garage and will be converted into a, um, yeah, this is the updated version, yeah. So again, a studio unit, kitchenette, bathroom, um, small sleeping slash living area, um, deciding to match the existing house for you to more residential scale. And um, that's about it. The, the height will remain the same, the footprint will remain the same uh, from the exterior side of things. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any questions from the board? Yes, um, is she planning to, is the owner planning to rent this or to have extended family living in? She will use this herself, actually. Um, she has family in different parts of the country and then also down in Mexico, so she tends to come and go. So she's currently renting the two, the two family that she has and she herself will be living here when she's here in Boston. Okay, great, thank you. No further questions. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, uh, can I have public testimony? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Um, I don't have a lot of information on this particular proposal, but we do understand that the applicant went to the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and received their support, as well as it's been indicated to us that other community members are in support as well. Uh, with that, we defer to the board at this time. Thank you. 
Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, with that, <clears throat> I have a motion. I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedbaraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, for your service today. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank that was you. Today, folks. Thank you. Next time. Recording stop.